Hello, this video is all about the Aladdin auto air vent. Now I recently came across a couple of these and neither of them were working and over the 20 years I've been working I've only come across a few of them and again none of them were working. So I wanted to find out a little bit more about them so I called the manufacturers to find out exactly how that they work and what they do so that if you're thinking about fitting some then you will know exactly what to expect from them. So I'm going to store these on this radiator here and I'll show you how to do that and this radiator has only just been decorated and right now it has no water in it at all. So I'm going to fit them on here I'm going to let the water go in and I'm going to see what happens and see if this auto air vent does automatically let the air out and stick around to the end of the video and I'll give you some tips on how to balance your radiators which will make them more efficient and make your boiler last longer and save you money my name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. If you think this video is useful, then click on that subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video or in the cards above. Now I've never used one of these before, so I'm interested to see what's going to happen. But if you've used them and you've had great results, then maybe you can leave a comment below. And also if you had really bad results, then again, maybe just leave it in the comments for everyone to see. Now, if you're thinking about fitting one of these because you're continuously letting air out of a radiator, then I feel this is not the answer for you. Because if you've got air continuously in your radiators and you have to keep bleeding them out, then you're just hiding the problem. You want to fix the problem, not hide it by letting the air out because if you've got fresh air coming into the system that also means you've got fresh oxygen coming into your system and that fresh oxygen is going to rust away your steel radiators and that rust then turns into that black sticky magnetite which sticks to everything in your system and blocks it up so by continuously letting the air out that is not a good thing you're just hiding the problem now also if you've got corrosion going on inside your radiators you're also probably going to be getting hydrogen building up and that hydrogen gas is also going to be let out by your auto air vent so you can see that hiding a problem like that is not a great idea and that magnetite is probably going to block up the auto air vent anyway now there are lots of reasons of why air can be drawn into central heating systems and that is for another video altogether but here is a very quick example of where air is drawn into your central heating system this is your typical open vented system where you have a small loft tank in the loft and you have the expansion pipe connected onto the tank and you have the open vent pipe coming over the top of the tank now this is your pump and it spins around and pumps water around your central heating system now what commonly happens is as your central heating gets older this expansion pipe becomes restricted or blocked the pump will then suck air down this open vent pipe into the water and obviously creating little bubbles which will come down the open vent pipe and then go around your central heating system filling it full of fresh air which also has fresh oxygen which will then create more dirt which will block up the pipe even more. So you have this continuous cycle. And then this pipe here I see gets extremely blocked as you'll see on a lot of, of my other videos. This section here becomes regularly completely blocked causing all sorts of problems. Now on the other hand, if you have a combination boiler and your system's nice and clean and you very rarely have to vent your radiators, then these would probably be the perfect answer. And it's gonna keep your radiators top to the, to the top and you're gonna have a nice, warm, efficient system. And if after watching this video, you decide that you want to buy some of these Aladdin auto air vents, then I've left the link in the description below, which will take you straight to them. Now here's the pack that I bought and this pack has got the auto air vent in it and it's also got a blanking plug. Now on the front of the piece of paper here you can see there's a little bit of information telling you about it. And on the back there you can see there's some more instructions which tells you how to go about installing it and operating it. Now let's take a look at what we get inside the bag. So if we empty the bag out we will find that there is the uh, blanking plug. So that's a nice finish on that blanking plug. It uh, looks very good. And this is the auto air vent here. And then also you get this U key here. Now on the auto air vent you have this plastic cap protecting this little part here. Now this is where the air is let out of the radiator. It goes out through the little hole 
which is behind that little uh, plunger there. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this, but that hole is very small. There's not a very big gap inside there behind that little rubber seal. And I don't think it would take a lot to block that up. And that hole becoming blocked is not covered under your guarantee. So just bear that in mind. Now, I must say the finish on the blank and plug and the auto vent is very good. It's very nice, bright, shiny chrome. You can see this is a, a different air vent. You can see the chrome is much duller, hasn't got that same, same shine to it. And it's uh, also uh, a, a slightly different color. And there's a manual air vent. Obviously compare that to your auto air vent. Again, it's very similar. Um, the auto air vent is very shiny with a nice bright blue chrome. Now, what's this U key for? Well, the U key is so that you can put it into the cartridge here and it allows you to open and close the valve and remove the cartridge. Now, when I unscrew it, you can see that little jumper or that little plug goes in and out. And you'll see that go. There's a little rubber seal there. And when I turn it, you'll see that opens up. And if I keep on doing it, it closes it all together. So you would use this for bleeding and draining your radiators and also to remove the cartridge completely. But as that is a very small hole and it is a little rubber seal, I can see the seal going hard over time and also that little hole getting blocked up. There's also a little delicate spring on that plunger. And again, I could see that possibly getting stuck over time. Now to remove the cartridge, I just keep unscrewing it. And then here's the cartridge here. And this is the clever part of the auto air vent. Now, again, you can see there's a very small hole there. And they did tell me that that hole can become blocked up. And if your auto air vent stops working, then you may need to remove the cartridge and clean out that hole. And any heating engineer would tell you that little small holes can easily become blocked up. Now, how do these things work? Well, I was told that inside here they have some special paper and that paper has a name and it's called hydroscopic paper. So there's sheets of hydroscopic paper inside here and that's what stops the water from flowing through and only letting air out. Now, you can see on the front of this card here, it says it has a five year guarantee. Now, the manufacturers told me that this auto air vent here, this cartridge will last between five and ten years. And after that time, it will stop working. So if you want your radiators to keep on automatically venting air, you will need to change this cartridge at some point in the future. And my thought there is, will this be available in five to ten years? Because this is version three of this auto air vent. So there may be a version four or even five in the future. And then will this old cartridge then still be available? And this version three cartridge does not fit the version two auto air vent as versions one and two are completely different. So there's a little bit of food for thought for you. And when I was talking to the nice people at Aladdin, they also told me because I was an installer and I like it to be draining and uh, refilling systems, that uh, I will need to have this little horseshoe thing. Because when I come to um, uh, fill a system up, that these will, it does let the air out, but obviously it does it very, very slowly. So I'm not gonna fill this system up in, in a few minutes. It may take several hours. And I have to go around and just crack this open slightly and obviously not too far because if I open it too far, it's going to close it here. So I literally just kind of open it a tiny bit and it's going to let the air come out of the radiator. OK, um, but that makes me think, well, I, I might as well just use, use one of these and use a, a, a normal key, which will let the air out really, really quickly. So I can see as an installer, that is not kind of a, a great plan. It's going to take some time. And also bear in mind, when you come to drain it down, you have exactly the same thing. You obviously you can let, try and let the water out, but the, the water is not going to come out. But you're then going to need to loosen this. OK, and again, you only need to loosen it a little bit. If you do it too much, then this is going to close. And again, the water is not going to come out. As an installer, I don't see that as being helpful. Now, if you are going to fit some of these, the first thing we're going to need to do is to close the radiator valve. So we need to close this valve here. And we're also going to need to close the valve at the other end. If we come back to this valve here. Now, like I said, I've already closed these because this radiator has been off for decorating. So it is already closed, but I will show you anyway. So we're just going to undo the screw on the top here. Then I'm going to use an adjustable spanner to close the valve down. Then when you come to close the valves down, then make sure that you count how many turns it takes to close the valve. And then when you come to open it, you turn it back to the same position. That will ensure that your system stays balanced. That's if it's balanced in the first place. So this valve is now closed. So then I would need to go to the other end 
and then repeat the process. I need to just take the cap off and then close the radiator valve, counting how many turns it takes to close it. Because again, we want to make sure that when we put it back on, that it remains balanced. If you have a thermostatic valve or a wheel head valve, then just close those down also. And if you're wondering why this radiator is gray and it's sparkly, that's because I sprayed it with some gray paint and some sparkle to give it that extra special finish. And if you're interested in doing that, then you can watch my other video all about spraying up radiators and I'll leave a link in the description. Now both radiator valves are shut. So when I come to remove this plug, if the radiator was full of water, then when I remove the plug, then I'm gonna get some water run out because there's water obviously right to the top of there. So that's why you wanna put a towel down and use a little bowl just to catch any water that may come out. So just to demonstrate that, you just wanna put yourself a little towel on the floor down here, just to catch any water which may come out like that. And they have a little pot you can maybe try catching the water here or underneath here and try and catch the water that, that way. Before you take this plug out of here, you wanna just bleed off any of the pressure which is inside here and also the top of the water, the water which is gonna be in the top there. And that's why you want the bowl and the towel for. So you just wanna loosen that, that off and then if you've got the white ones they, with a little white cap on it, that will just rotate around. Uh, but obviously, like I said, I'm not gonna get any water coming out because there's no water in this radiator. Okay, so just once you've done that, you can then just carefully remove this and be careful you don't scratch your paintwork around here because it's very easy to slip and catch that and damage that. Okay, so take that out there. Here's an important point. When you come to do this, make sure that the inside of the radiator here is nice and clean. So if there's any rust on it, make sure you clean that off. And if you've got a brand new radiator or if you sprayed it and you've got paint on it, make sure you clean off some of that paint so that the rubber seal on the blanking plug seals against the steel and not against the paintwork. Because I've seen it before where the water actually goes in between the paint and the radiator. This may take several years to start leaking. So we don't wanna be doing that. So make sure that you, you clean away some of the paint. So I'm just gonna use my file and a little bit of emery to clean away the paint or rust. Now I've finished cleaning off all the paint. I'm quite happy there's a little steel ring around there. So it's gonna sit on there quite happily and will make a good seal. Here's the brand new plug. We're gonna put that into there. It's quite a deep thread. It looks like the thread's a bit deeper than, than before. So um, uh, maybe not, maybe it's about the same then. But what I have noticed is it is a fair bit shallower. So this is gonna be quite tricky to do this up because this is kind of recessed a little bit. So you might wanna use something like a box spanner or something like, like that just to screw this, this in. But um, I, I'm gonna see how I get on or I might end up using a socket because I don't wanna damage the paintwork. Okay, let's just put that in there. Very carefully do this up. Maybe do this like that. Now, when I've seen people do these up, I've seen people saying, don't do these very, very tight. You only need to do a nip them up to the rubber. I don't find that to be the case at all. I find that these ones be really nice and tight. If you're not nice and tight, you may find in five years time, they start leaking because what will happen is the rubber will go hard. It'll shrink a bit and then you'll get water dripping out of here. And that's where you see these brown runs coming down radiators where these are not done up tight enough. So I do these up as tight as I can. Now I'm not particularly happy with this because I'm just gonna scratch this. So I'm gonna use something else to do this up with. Now these Aladdin blanken plugs turned out to be a little bit of a pain to do up. I thought I'd try using a socket on it and this is an inch, but the socket was too big to fit in and it ended up just chipping a little bit of paint, which was a bit annoying. And the just ball spanners out because that will definitely scratch the radiator. So I went back to use my box spanner and that's the standard size and you can see it doesn't quite fit. And the other end is a little damaged so I didn't really want to use it. Now I've repaired that box spanner. Now the inch size fits okay. So I'm gonna put that box spanner on there and then carefully do this up really nice and tight. Pretty much as tight as I can get it. I thought I'd just add in over 25 years, I've never had to use the other end of this box spanner. So this is the first time I've come across a blanking plug of this size. 
and the rubber o-rings on these Aladdin blanking plugs are a little harder than the ones I usually find so it's quite hard to get the blanking plug flush with the radiator but there we go that's done up and that looks absolutely fine now I can see there are no gaps between the blanking plug and the radiator so I know that that is as tight as it's going to get now I'm just going to make sure that I haven't left the cartridge loose because obviously I took it out earlier and you can see I just want to do that up I don't want this really tight just nip it up uh, finger tight and that is as tight as you're going to need to do it now I'm just going to need to repeat the process on the other end of the radiator so I'm going to remove the blanking plug and then I'm just going to clean off the paint on the inside so I've got that steel showing on the inside so I'll get a good seal so there we go now I've got a nice rim of steel around there ready to screw the blanking plug onto and once again I'm going to do this up really nice and tight so this is a little annoying, although I tried to move the panels out of the way, uh, the uh, box spanner still just caught the edge of the radiator there and just left a little scratch on there. So if you are thinking about doing this and you want to keep your panels perfect, then maybe consider taking them off. Now I've got both plugs fitted, I can now open up the radiator valves and let some water into the radiator. So I've now let a little bit of water into the radiator and I've closed the radiator valve I'm going to go to the other side, going to open this radiator valve up and that will let some more water in and that makes sure that no air goes back into the system. Don't forget to open both your valves to the same amount as when you close them to keep your system balanced. Just going to put the cap loosely back on there. So there we go, so now I've opened both the radiator valves and the water's come into the radiator and it's probably filled it up to somewhere around about this level here. So the rest of the air inside here is now pressurized and it's trying to get out through that air vent. And we just have to wait and see how long it takes for this to fill up. I'm not gonna to touch this, I'm gonna wait and see for it to, how long it's gonna come out or whether I'm gonna to have to use this little horseshoe thing and, uh, and undo it. And uh, but I'm gonna wait and see over the next few days and see what, what happens. So now it's about 12 hours later and the heating has just come on. Now I'm not sure how long it's taken for the air to vent out of this radiator, but what I can tell you is now the radiator is hot to the top. So the Lanning Auto Air Vent has done a really good job of venting out all that air right to the top and it's done it automatically for me. And if you are looking to purchase some of these Aladdin Auto Air Vents, then I've left the link in the description below, which will take you straight to them. Now when it comes to balancing your system, this can make your system hugely more efficient, making your house warmer and it can save you a ton on your energy bills. And it's fairly straightforward to do. Now I do have this temperature measuring device and it makes it very accurate in setting this up. But what you're looking to do is to get a noticeable difference between one pipe and the other pipe. Now the recommended temperature difference is between 20 and 11 degrees. Now you can see on my display right now, it says that T1, that's the flow temperature, is 47.4 degrees and the return temperature is 37.1 degrees. So the difference between those two pipes is 10.3 degrees. Now in my experience, you'll never get 20 degrees across a radiator, not unless you don't want it to feel very hot at all. It just doesn't work unless you have a really massive radiator. Obviously, you're not going to have a gadget to do this, but you don't need one. All you need to do is to feel the difference between the two pipes. Use the same hand and feel one pipe and feel the other pipe. If you can't feel a difference between the two pipes, then the water is flowing through the radiator too fast and it's going to make your boiler inefficient and your radiator inefficient. So you just need to close that lock shield valve down a little bit. And then you want to wait a little while and then come back to the radiator and check it again. And the best time to do this is first thing in the morning when your heating's coming on. And if you have thermostatic valves, you want those all to be open because you want the flow to be as it would be if all the radiators were open. Once your house is warmed up and the thermostats start kicking in, that will start altering the temperature difference between the two pipes. So that's why we want to do it early in the morning when your heating's coming on. And with all the thermostats wide open. A little word of caution though, if you haven't turned your radiator valves for a very long time, there is a possibility that as soon as you turn the spindle, they'll start leaking. And you may have no choice and you'll have to change the radiator valve. 
Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to watch my next video, then you can click on the link just here. And if you found my video helpful in any way, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And like I said, that will help others to find your video. And if you enjoyed the video, then you can click on subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.